Well, we're reaching a very crucial point in the winter season, I believe. Even though it is only the we're only ending uh, month one of three of the winter season, I do believe the next few weeks is going to determine where this winter is going to go with regards to the warmer or colder scenario overall. Um, and I do think that if we are going to see anything major, it is going to lie with the uh, the stratosphere, I believe. I think anything over the next you know two to three weeks that we do see cold wise is going to be relatively transient in, in, in nature because at this very moment in time, folks, the polar vortex is, is pretty strong. There's no point in kidding anybody on. Uh, it's it's reasonably strong, and um, we've got a big split in the models. ECMWF maintains a strong polar vortex. GFS sees uh, a different uh, scenario uh, over the next, you know, a uh, couple of weeks here. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see as we go forward here where it goes. But as promised, I want to look at the 10 HPA temperatures of the GFS. Looking rather interesting because what we've got is we've got a little bit of a wrestling match that the GFS is going to host between the polar vortex and the warmth up at the 10 HPA level between Asia and Europe here. Now, if I play through the animation, the polar vortex is reasonably strong, but look at the warming that takes place over the unusual part, Northeast Atlantic, over Europe, and then travels around uh, Asia, up over the top. And look at that, at the very, very end of the loop, the very, very end of the loop, we have, in my opinion, a sudden stratospheric warming because the warming goes right over the top of the pole and essentially collapses the vortex on this model run. I have to emphasize that this is not me guaranteeing a sudden stratospheric warming, but I do believe that anything major we see this year, it will be this that does it. That is the call that I'm going to make at this moment in time. So Let's just continuously monitor the situation. I do think that anything up until this time frame, remember a sudden stratospheric warming, you have to see the temperature at 10 HPA rise by about 50 Celsius, going from what minus 80 at the moment right up to freezing. So that, of course, is is a, is a actually 80 Celsius, but generally you get a kind of 50, 60, 70 Celsius warming at 850 or um, a 10 HPA or way up at the very top of the stratosphere to constitute a sudden stratospheric warming event and the GFS is certainly pushing more towards that so we'll, we'll kind of continuously watch it and monitor this situation if that happens it's usually about two to three even four weeks later after that initial sudden stratospheric warming that we see the response down through the troposphere. That, of course, is um, hoping that we have that coupling between stratosphere and troposphere in order to then propagate that influence, that warming influence, and pushes essentially pushes the, the vortex down into the lower portion of the atmosphere, which influences our weather. Another thing that I need to emphasize, this... Even if that does happen, it doesn't guarantee cold for the western portion of Europe here. Um, a lot of things have to come in to play in order for that to, to fully materialise here and for us to see the true effects of it. But certainly it's interesting what the modelling is indicating at least. Anything before this will be reasonably transient. The Arctic Oscillation is expected to go um, positive, so too is the NAO. So that is um, certainly indicating more transients in any type of cold pattern. Now, we've had a very chilly uh, day still across the northern portion of Scotland, down into the central belt. What a contrast in temperature, even just kind of around the early portion of the afternoon. Let's skip, skip back. You can see here, this is a 10 to, 10 to 12 the, 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 this morning, and we had a temperature of minus 4 at Antlahara, minus 4 at Garnock, minus 2 at Tain, minus 1 at Inverness Airport, minus 3 at Aviemore, but then 75 miles south, 
or ish and we had 8 celsius at glasgow big contrast in terms of temperature so the cold is lingering on over the northern portion of the british isles and with clear skies tonight temperature could go down close to minus 10 believe it or not in a couple of spots all the while of course we cast our eyes to the south temperatures 12 13 celsius uh, quite easily on that south coast and of course we know where the temperature is going over the next uh, several days here looking at the gfs this is the ensemble here and uh, the the upcoming five days is just literally a blowtorch acro across europe say goodbye to any kind of major cold that we've seen over even northern europe uh, during the christmas period but then the six to ten days still warmth lingering if you notice here so this is out to the 7th of january but then the 11 to 15 day period indicates a cooling trend taking place now this if if it happens is not necessarily anything to do with the stratosphere this to me would be um more of an influence such as the madden julian oscillation or, or so on and so forth and of course remember what i said in yesterday's video as the winter progresses into the second portion the atmosphere is changing. The oceans are starting to cool off slightly compared to what they were back at the beginning of December, for example. Temperatures are colder by the time we reach the, the latter half of January. For So uh, these are all things that we need to consider as we go forward here. Um, but yeah, we'll watch and continue to see this weather pattern as it evolves. Might be hands down wrong this year. I'm going to, uh, like, like I said, with January or December, should I say, Christmas time, if I'm wrong, I will hold up my hand and say I was wrong. And I know there's people out there desperate to see this not happen so that they can just go under the comments and say their piece. Uh, at the end of the day, I've made a forecast. I'm going to stick to that forecast that I believe that there is plenty of winter still to come with regards to cold and snow across the western portion of Europe. But we'll wait and see what happens. Hope you have a great day. Back again, hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.